while a profound silence enveloped all things, and night was in the midst of her course, your all-powerful word, O Lord, leapt down from your royal throne. Welcome to worship this morning. This is the second Sunday of our celebration of Jesus' birth, the second Sunday of Christmas. I'm glad you can worship this morning. Uh, the slide should guide you through our service as usual. A couple of things have been, uh, well, one thing was added and a couple of things have been changed. We have an entrance psalm rather than an entrance song. We have an entrance psalm. And then some of the offering psalms and the, uh, the post-communion psalms are a little different, but they are printed on the screen and in the pamphlet for you this morning. I invite you to stand as you're able, and we'll begin with that entrance psalm. We read responsibly. The Lord is king. He has put on splendid apparel. The Lord has put on his apparel and girded himself with strength. He has made the whole world so sure that it cannot be moved. Ever since the world began, your throne has been established. You are from everlasting. The waters have lifted up, O Lord. The waters have lifted up their voice. The waters have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the sound of many waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, mightier is the Lord who dwells on high. Your testimonies are very sure, and holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever and forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lowly and downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins, those we know and those known only to you. For the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ, made known to all people. With all who come to the manger, let us rejoice in this amazing grace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have filled all the earth with the light of your incarnate word. By your grace, empower us to reflect your light in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the word.
reading from Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I'm going to bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together, a great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it to the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion. and They shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the, old, the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people will be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read the psalm responsibly. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you has established peace on your borders. He satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends out his command to the earth, and his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He scatters his hail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against his cold? He sends forth his word and melts them, he blows with his wind, and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and his judgments to Israel. He has not done so to any other nation. To them he has not revealed his judgments. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. Hallelujah. A reading from Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and insight, he has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time, to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption 
as God's own people to the praise of his glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Alleluia. The holy gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son who is close to the Father's heart who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So, aside from the fact that you can carry a phone in your purse or in your pocket, right? That's the, the first amazing thing about these little devices that are everywhere now, right? You probably have some close at hand even now. The other, the other best thing about the cell phone is, and it's not any app, it's not the fact that you can get on the internet, who needs the internet? The best thing is this, the flashlight, right? How often have you needed that little bit of extra light to see in the corner? And could you have your phone handy? You have a flashlight. Not those big old flashlights that we used to have. You have to keep them in the cupboard and take them down. And, no, it's right there, handy in your pocket. I was reminded of its value again this morning. I get up early on Sunday morning, and all the rest of my family is sleeping in, and my dogs are laying around on the floor around my bed. And it's dark, and I leave the lights off. So I come out of the bright shower, and my eyes are all adjusted to the bright light. And since I've had my cataract surgery, it seems to be harder to see in the dark come out, I have to walk into my room, and I don't want to step on the dog, I don't want to stub my toe. The light, a little light, guides me in. That, I think, is the, the second best thing about cell phones, the first being that it's actually a phone. Some people don't remember that fact. But here we are talking about the significance of light at the beginning of John's Gospel. Now, the early church fathers used these passages in John to talk about the divinity of the Son and the Son's co-eternity with, with the Father and, and how Jesus was not created but was with God, that is, the second person of the Trinity. Jesus was, of course, born in Mary. The second person of the Trinity was not created by the Father when the Father began creating, but, but was there, right? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, it wasn't that God was there and then God made the word. 
So the early church fathers made a big deal of that because we were still trying to figure out how to describe the second person of the Trinity, the Son of God, the Word of God. And so here we hear the reminders. The Son of God is divine, is God, and is co-eternal with the Father. But that kind of message doesn't connect with us too much today. It doesn't make much difference in our lives, unless you're a theologian debating with other theologians about how to understand the second person of the Trinity. But as we come to this line about light, we are reminded of the significance of this season. We're reminded of the significance in this passage. What came into being in this word of God that was incarnate in Jesus Christ, what came into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. This is a passage about the significance of Christ for today, for every day, as we find ourselves walking in the darkness of this world. Now, in case you need me to remind you of the darkness of this world, uh, Luther described it by using this, this unholy trinity, he called it, of sin, death, and the devil. These are the ways that we can talk about darkness in the world around us. Sin comes from inside of us. It's what we say or do or think, how we are separated from God, and how that comes out of us in the lives that we live. We all have sin. We all have things we need to work on, uh, even if they're, they're petty, trivial things, that short temper that we have, or the real things that, that lead us to hurt other people in our lives, addictions and angers and hatreds, prejudices. Sin comes from inside us, what we say or do or think. The second of that unholy trinity of Martin Luther was death. Death is part of us as human beings, imperishable and mortal bodies. We are created to be embodied. We are connected to our bodies by which through death we are finally separated from all things. We can't take it with us. All relationships come to an end because death is part of our lives. Sin comes from inside of us. Death is part of us as human beings. The third of that unholy trinity is the devil. And if you get hung up on the pitchfork and the tail and the red suit, it is evil. It's evil that comes upon us from outside. Natural disasters, oppression, violence, sickness, and disease. And now darkness becomes obvious, right? If we want to deny our sinfulness and want to deny our death, we can't deny the darkness of disease, be it the cancer with which we are diagnosed or the COVID that floats around our neighborhoods. Evil in the world is real. It is the darkness. It is the darkness in which we dwell. And so many people in our world desire choose to live in darkness with their addictions, with their hatreds, with their angers. They choose to make decisions to not step in to the light. But the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The light remains. And we who are followers of Christ seek to move ourselves when we step off the path into that light, when we experience separation and loss and sorrow, those hints of death yet to come. We step into the light. When we are surrounded by the darkness of natural disasters and oppression and violence, we come to the light in which we find our hope, in which we place our trust. Here at the very beginning of John's Gospel, in his first chapter, John writes about this metaphor of light shining in darkness, and then comes back to it quickly in the third chapter. And it follows immediately after that famous passage 
John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. That is, this is how judgment takes place. This is the judgment that the light has come into the world and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. There it is, the invitation to come into the light even when we've done evil. Notice, John doesn't write, those who do what is right come to the light, but those who do what is true, because they know the truth of Jesus Christ. They know that in Christ there is life and light. And so we admit our sinfulness, we admit our fallenness, we admit, admit our mortality. We admit that we need Jesus Christ, so we place our trust and our hope in him. When you feel the darkness creeping close, when you find yourself having wandered into the shade, when you feel the separation that is but a hint of the separation that comes from death, turn again to the lights. Turn again to Jesus Christ. Place your trust and hope and confidence in him who is the word of God, who is God, who was in the beginning and will be now and forever. Amen.
please stand as you're able. The peace of Christ be with you always. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that your Son the eternal word, became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Extend his praise into all the world, that many more with us would come to hope in his steadfast love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Heavenly Father, your Son diligently heard the word of God and grew in wisdom and stature submissive to his earthly parents and always about your business and in your house. Keep the families of your church abiding in your word, eager to be found among your word and sacraments, and always treasuring your divine wisdom and favor. Bless those who observe the anniversary of their baptism this week. Gabrielle Kettle, Faith Kettle, Colson Manny, Rebecca Flynn, Brandon Smith, Jacob Dutcher, Kimberly Myers, Tracy Vins, and Gary Hergert. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Heavenly Father, you have blessed us in Christ, your beloved Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Preserve your church by the preaching of the gospel of salvation and the seal of the promised Holy Spirit in baptism. Raise up among us faithful preachers to the praise of Christ's glory until we acquire the inheritance promised us in him. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Heavenly Father, you gave to your servant Solomon unsurpassed wisdom to rule your people Israel, chiefly the wisdom that begins in fearing you. Give to the leaders and elected officials of our nation wisdom for their task discern between good and evil, and to govern this people in peace and quietness. Be gracious to preserve our president and president-elect, our governor and all legislators and judges. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Heavenly Father, give patience and endurance to all who are sick or in any need, especially the, fl the family of Clarice, Duane, Penny, Ron, Tim, Becky, the family of Elaine, Larry, Carleen, Jennifer, Mary Ellen, John, Ada, Terry, Judy, Jean, Carl, Lorraine, Virginia, Bill, Roseanne, Andrea, Judy, Al, Lorenzo, Carol, Melanie, Jody, Dick, Chris, Wanda, Jessica, Janet, Annette, Lois, Karen, Patty, Bev, 
Jennifer, all those affected by COVID-19, and those who name now silently or aloud. Heal them according to your will. Receive our thanksgiving for every blessing and kindness you have shown to your people. Give comfort and hope to all who mourn. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Heavenly Father, your Son has won redemption through his blood, granting the forgiveness of our trespasses. So now, according to the riches of your grace, receive those who come to your blessed sacrament this day. Grant worthy repentance and confident faith in all who commune, united in a sincere confession of the faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Father, when you consider the greatness of your gift, remember our poverty as well. We have nothing to give you that can compare with your Son made flesh for us, except instead these simple offerings as a token of our great joy. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let us recite responsibly the offering song. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. He redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with mercy and loving kindness. He satisfies you with good things, and your youth is renewed like an eagle. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made his ways known to Moses and his works to the children of Israel. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us According to our wickedness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. In the wonder and mystery of the Word made flesh, you have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophets' hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the Word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come. Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The word is revealed in a manger, in simple bread and wine. Receive Christ in this meal. Thanks be to God. Please be seated as we recite the Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace.
Please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. O Lord, our Lord, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what is man that you should be mindful of him? the Son of Man, that you should seek him out. You have made him but little lower than the angels. You adorn him with glory and honor. You give him mastery over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> Let us pray. At your table, O Lord, you show your glory in all its brightness. Dissolve the darkness in our lives with your forgiveness, in order that we may see and therefore love. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please remain standing because there's really no long announcements. Check the yellow page for things. The office is open Monday through Thursday at the usual times this week. Bible study on Monday. Next Saturday, it's not written in the yellow page, but next Saturday at 9, we will gather for some bee decorating. We'll take down Christmas decorations if you're able to join us at 9. Uh, we'll work in different corners of the room, and uh, the process should go quickly. So Saturday morning at 9 o'clock for the de-decorating. It is a new year, as you are probably well aware and wanting to celebrate. We begin with, we end our service with a prayer for the beginning of the new year. <clears throat> oh God, you have been our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. As we celebrate and welcome this new year, bless us with peace. Fill our days with the light of Christ and lead us on the path of life until we see you in our heavenly home where you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Share the gift of Jesus. Thanks be to God.